Lesson number one, guys, is going to be phenomenal. So it's actually going to be a BTM or ATM business. What do you want to start first? I'll tell you how I started and I'll tell you exactly how I think you should start depending on your situation, guys. After that, I'm going to cover the bulletproof mindset to make sure you become a millionaire. After that, guys, once you guys are ready, when you know you're about to be a millionaire, I'm going to break down exactly how you can take your step towards that million by generating $10,000 a month in your Bitcoin ATM business, guys. What's going on, guys? I'm getting your CEO of ATMtogether.com. This is, I mean, one of the largest Facebook groups in the nation. Actually, the largest when it comes to the ATM and BTM business. And if you've noticed from my background, guys, check out this background. It's like a little old school, if you can't imagine. Well, I'm actually in Eastern Europe right now. It is 2 a.m., guys. Check this out. It is... 2 a.m. outside. So as you can tell, I'm a little tired. I had some San Pellegrino and like five shots of espresso, but I'm here for you because at the end of the day, we're all about the people. We want to give you guys the info, all right? So welcome. I want to know where you guys are actually watching this from. So comment below your city and states because at the end of the day, we want to know where we're reaching out to because if we have some locations, we want to make sure you guys can take advantage. So comment below the city and state you guys are watching from right now. Like I said, I'm in Eastern Europe. It's 2 a.m. over here. It should be 5 p.m. in California where I'm supposed to be at right now. All right. So with that being said, also, guys, we are pre-recording this for YouTube. We actually have a YouTube channel that's growing right now. It's actually growing. So make sure you hit the like and subscribe button if you're watching this on YouTube, guys. But let's see where you guys are actually commenting from. Wayne, New Jersey. Very cool. Very cool. Orange County, California. That's what I'm talking about. Best place in the nation. Roy, welcome from California. Chicago, Illinois, that's what I'm talking about. Fort Lauderdale, Colin, what's going on, brother? Let's see what else we got here. Houston, Texas, okay. Houston, you guys are, I mean, people from Texas, guys, you guys are known for a few things, and barbecue is one of them, man. So with that being said, guys, I'm very excited to be here with you guys. If you're watching this live, and keep in mind, guys, I'm at a hotel, so I'm supposed to be pretty quiet, but I don't care. So if you're watching this live, comment live below because I appreciate you. That's why I'm here. I'm telling you, it's two. It's 2.05 a.m. and I'm here presenting live for you guys because I couldn't skip this for anything. But if you're watching this on a replay, meaning that maybe it's a week later, two days later, a month later, it doesn't matter. It's February 8th right now where I'm at, 2 a.m. Right now, it should be February 7th for you. But if you're watching this as a replay, make sure you comment replay below because we always like to reach out to you guys and make sure you get all the resources you need to be successful. All right. And this also helps us with the algorithms because we didn't grow from 500 members in our Facebook group to 50,000 plus for no reason. At the end of the day, it comes down to algorithms. This is the subject matter standard. When it comes to the ATM and BTM industry, that's why you guys are here to get some free resources, all right? Help us grow this group and we will help you out. Speaking of which, guys, speaking of which, I got something special for you, all right? So very important announcement, guys. We have our another ATM together raffle, guys. I was actually on the plane talking about this and they were going wild. I was sitting there, I was like, I was standing in front. The flight attendant could even do the safety instructions. I said, guys, we got a raffle. This is how you enter, right? Now, if you guys are excited, you guys are absolutely excited, you want to know what the details of this raffle are, comment raffle below, guys, because I'm not getting an engagement here, guys, and I need some help. I need some help to make sure that people see us, guys, all right? Comment raffle below, because if you know how our raffles go, they are absolutely phenomenal. We set the stage, and we're talking about just throwing away money, guys, right? I see a few comments. Okay, guys. So there's a few things. The first out of these three prizes, because there's three prizes, is going to be a full automation package, guys. That means you are going to get an actual cash ATM, a premium location, everything included to get your ATM business up and running, guys. That's prize number one. But we couldn't just stop with one because at the end of the day, this isn't a lotto. So Prize number two is actually going to be a brand new Hiyu Sung Halo 2, guys. That is a top of the line, brand new, latest model cash ATM for you guys to be successful in the business. So if you're second place, you know, they say first the worst, second the best, then you get a Hiyu Sung Halo 2. But here's the thing, guys. Prize number three, because we couldn't leave you guys hanging with just two prizes. We want to increase the likelihood of you winning, you watching right now, because this is exclusive. 
is going to be a premium location. And what that means is whether you want a cash location or a Bitcoin ATM location, it doesn't matter. If you guys saw one of our most recent clients just got a Bitcoin ATM location, just had their first transaction in like the second day, made like 50 bucks in like a day. Right. So that's going to be prize number three. And let me show you exactly how you guys can actually enter. Let's see if this works. There we go. So it's real simple, guys. If you want to actually enter this raffle, it's real simple. It's actually going to be on Instagram. And can you guys see my page? There we go. All right. So let me try to pull this up on my side too. Boom, right here. So if you see my page at Get em Why, make sure, make sure you pay attention, guys. It's at Get em Why. I bring this up because there's a lot of scam accounts out there. Make sure you don't get scammed. The spelling has to be correct. Okay. And one of our team members can drop the actual Instagram handle, but this post right here is exactly how you get to win. You put House real big, cars real big, big real big. Exactly the steps you need to do. It's real simple. You just repost it, submit it to this website over here, and that's it. You enter. And we're only going to announce the actual winner. Guess when? On a Facebook Live. It's actually going to be the last week of February, guys. So you only have a little bit of time left. Make sure, guys, make sure you actually get in on this Facebook Live, guys. All right. So with that being said, guys, I'm, I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited. And you know what? If you're excited, why don't you comment link below? Because one of our team members will actually comment and send you a copy of this, the actual entry requirements for you guys to start your ATM business for free with our raffle. So comment link below. We'll reach out. We'll send you the link exactly how to enter because you're on the raffle. That means, or you're actually on this live, that means you have a higher likelihood of winning because not a lot of people know about this. We'd like to keep it secret for a reason, right? So without further ado, guys. Without further ado, let me get to the agenda because I'm already 10 minutes in. I'm sleepy, guys. I'm not going to lie, but I'm still going to bring you the hot sauce today because I want – we got some phenomenal lessons, right? So lesson number one, guys, is going to be phenomenal. So it's actually going to be a BTM or ATM business. What do you want to start first? Because I actually get this question a lot. I've been traveling a lot lately talking about Bitcoin ATMs and cash ATMs, and I get this question all the time. Like, what should I start with first? And if you know me – I'll tell you how I started, and I'll tell you exactly how I think you should start, depending on your situation, guys. After that, I'm going to cover something a little special and closer to my heart, because at the end of the day, it's all about mindset. So I'm going to cover the bulletproof mindset to make sure you become a millionaire, because I truly believe you watching this live right now, you will be the next millionaire. You will be that millionaire in your family. I know you will, just because you're taking the time for self-education. And then... After that, guys, once you guys are ready, when you know you're about to be a millionaire, I'm going to break down exactly how you can take your step towards that million by generating $10,000 a month in your Bitcoin ATM business, guys. All right? So it's going to be a phenomenal presentation. Okay? And remember, this is being pre-recorded for YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe and like button because we're growing on YouTube. We're growing on all the platforms, guys. Right? So with that being said, guys, let's actually get to it because I do not want to run out of time. I have a lot of information to give you guys. So let me give you guys a little bit about myself. And let's see how this works right here. Boom. So like I mentioned, Weekly Live today. My name is Gedim Yonis. I'm the CEO of this company called ATMtogether.com. We've been around for a little bit. I, um, I, I wasn't in this position at all times. I'll put it this way. Right. I don't want to get too much in the story, but I was in debt, credit card debt, a little. I mean, I was swiping those cards, guys, because I was trying to survive. I had a dead end job. I had expenses to pay for. You know how it goes. You know the story. Now, with that being said, served in the Marine Corps, was a little homeless for a little while, trying to find some housing, trying to find a situation. I actually got into law enforcement that catapulted my career and my lifestyle because I just worked my ass off. I actually invested in crypto back in 2016. That ended up adding two commas to the bank accounts. As you know, that means a seven figure investor got into real estate. A few of the businesses that failed also. But at the end of the day, that's why I'm here running operations for ATMtogether.com. And ATMtogether.com, in case you guys didn't know, we actually launched in January of 2021. So we're, I mean, two, a little over two years, right? Well, since then, we have exploded. We have literally helped over 1,500 clients nationwide and in Canada also because we can't leave Canada out, guys start their actual cash ATM and Bitcoin ATM businesses. Since then, we've been able to, been able to generate over $1.2 million in passive income for people, guys. I mean, think about that. We've installed over 2,700 ATMs. That's cash ATMs. That's not including Bitcoin ATMs. So we've grown for a little bit, guys. 
So with that being said, you guys are going to be the next success story, all right? But I want to actually break down, before we get started, I want to break down how you can actually get a premium BTM location. Because you're probably wondering, you're like, hey, get them. Like, why are you actually in Eastern Europe? Well, I actually just spent the last week with our call center, the famous call center that has found us thousands of locations nationwide guys these subject matter experts for finding locations with cash atms and bitcoin atms i wanted to learn the secrets i wanted to meet them hand and i wanted to actually identify all the secrets of finding bitcoin atm location guys they actually might bust in my room any second now security might knock on the door so i got to get through this quick but i jotted down as much as possible because there's too much information so i just jotted down what i could remember I actually traveled all the way over here with this information, guys. So let me ask you a question. How many of you guys would actually be interested in a brief breakdown, free, absolutely free, of what to look for in BTM location, guys? Comment finder below. Comment finder if you're interested in the free guide that I just created. Real simple. Of the information, I had to I had to translate this into a PDF, guys. I had to translate this. All right, one of our team members will reach out with this guide, guys. Comment finder below. I got to make sure you're engaged at the end of the day, guys. I got to make sure. All right. So, with that being said, all right, let's break down exactly whether you should start with a BTM or ATM location, guys. All right. So, with that being said, guys, when it comes down to the Bitcoin ATM and Cash ATM business. The easiest way to determine which way to go, you guys know how? It's simple. You decide, hey, do I want to do something passive or semi-passive? And what I mean by that is, do I want something that's completely hands-off? I mean, like literally hands-off. Or do I want to do something that requires a little more sweat equity? Well, that's a good question at the end of the day, right? Because depending on your situation in life depends on what you're actually going to want to do. So I just want to quick, take a quick survey. I want to know exactly what you guys' thoughts are, so what I should actually focus on. So if you're interested in something that's more semi-passive, meaning you're going to put a little more effort in, comment. We'll say we'll comment semi-passive below, okay? But if you're interested in something like completely hands-off, like you're like, hey, I just want to put a little money on it, and that's it. I don't want to even think about it. I just want to log in and check my profits. Comment profit. Comment sorry. Comment passive below. I want to see exactly what your guys' thoughts are. And I'm going to see your, your comments. Let's see. Let's see what is the consensus today, guys. Semi-passive. Eric, okay. I like that. Bilal, what's going on? Passive. Yep. I like that too. Semi-passive. I like the fact that you guys are willing to put effort in, guys. Because that's how I started my actual business. Passive. Passive and semi-passive. That's, that's a good combo, guys. All right. Very good. So when it comes down to it, guys, if you're looking for a more semi-passive business, all right, meaning that you're going to put a little more effort in. Well, what that means is you're going to go with the cash ATM business. And here's the reason why. The cash ATM business is a lower cost of entry. You're looking at, we'll say high four figures to start your cash ATM business. But it's a great foundation. That's actually how I catapulted my career into entrepreneurship. Because in case you guys didn't know, I actually had a business that failed. And I'll get into that in our second lesson. It's um, It, it still hits me sometimes. But at the end of the day, hey, you got to do what you got to do. You got to keep pushing. That's how I got to the way I'm at right now. So when it comes down to the cash ATM business, they're a great foundation because at the end of the day, they're simple. They're easy to scale. That's what got Paul, myself, Brandon, who has multiple ATMs in California, generating over $20,000 a month. Gianni, one of our ATM experts, generating another $15,000 a month from his ATMs. It creates a phenomenal foundation because at the end of the day, you got to ask yourself, what would you do with a few thousand dollars a month? That could pay for your bills. That could actually um, get you to save into your like certificate of deposit, your savings account, your child savings fund, or whatever, guys. So it creates a great foundation for whatever you want to do because at the end of the day, you have to have a why in business. That's the one thing that took me to the next level. And I don't want to get too much in the next lesson, but you have to have a reason why. And the cash ATM business can provide you a vehicle to get you there because it's simple. I know you guys are busy. 
Think about it, guys. The cash ATM business is very scalable and very simple because when it comes down to it, there's only a few factors in the cash ATM business. There is an LLC, right? Just the business you form. And I actually have a phenomenal guide on that. And if you do want to copy, just comment a guide below. Just comment guide. One of our team members will get to it. I just don't want to get away from this lesson. So you want the actual LLC. With that being said, you just need a business checking account. So you need a business checking account that works with the cash ATM business. And the reason why is because at the end of the day, banks don't want to work with cash ATMs. Big banks say no, 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 no. In fact, California is shut down when it comes down to cash ATMs. And the reason why is because you're a conflict of interest. You're generating revenue that is directly in competition with that bank. And it's the same with Bitcoin ATMs, but there's a way around that. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. But you have to have the bank account. Then you want to have your processing company. So the processing company is real simple. It's just a network that connects your actual cash ATM to the clients that use your ATM. And I like to call them clients because they're not customers. They're using you as a service. Okay. So they go to your machine. We'll say on Monday, they pull out, we'll say $40. They get charged a convenience fee, which is your business model. It's a convenience fee. We'll say that's typically about $3 or $3.50, guys. So $3, we'll just say $3. That $40 and $3 should go back to your bank account the next day, as long as you have a legit processing company. So you have to do your due diligence with that, guys. And if you want more info on that, shoot me a DM, shoot one of our team members. We'll break down the info on that because we have some horror stories when it comes to processing companies. Okay. So you want to have your processor. And then from there, what you need is, of course, an ATM. So make sure you buy a brand new ATM, guys. Don't buy used. Don't go cheap. Trust me. So many people, including, I mean, including Paul, have learned the hard way when it comes down to the ATM business. Do not buy used. When new, buy brand new. One of our processor, Mike Sandone for the United States, phenomenal. He has over, I think, 100. 20 or 121 locations right now. Last time I checked, he was at like 117. It doesn't matter. He's making a lot of money on ATMs. Lots of experience, decades of experience. The first thing he says is buy brand new because it's not much different and you don't want to deal with the headaches of getting a used outdated ATM. Okay. So you want to have those basics, but when it comes down to it, there's a little sweat equity involved because at the end of the day, more than likely you're going to install your own ATM. They're about, we'll say 200 pounds. So you can move them with a the dolly. We've seen clients actually move them in Toyota Priuses, right? I'm not kidding. Toyota Priuses, guys. I don't know what's going on, but I've actually seen the photo. And if you want it, I can send you a copy. But with that being said, the sweat equity comes in. And sweat equity, in case you guys didn't know, means that you're actually putting your effort into the business. You're not just hiring everybody for everything, okay? So it's going to be a little cheaper to start because you're putting in a little more effort. But at the end of the day, it requires a little more time. That's why I say semi-passive, right? Best example, guys. Best example is going to be some of our clients. Because some people get discouraged when it comes down to the ATM business. Things happen at the end of the day, right? It's business. You improvise, overcome, adapt, as they used to say in the United States Marine Corps. You always adapt. So you have to make moves on your own. In combination with the team is the best combo, but you're putting in your own effort. So one of the best examples is some of our best clients. Look up their names, Drew Francis and Derek Harris. Man, let me tell you something, guys, because one of the most common statements and questions I get in the cash ATM business is that it's saturated. There's no good locations. It's hard, right? Boo hoo, guys. The reason why you guys are here on this live is because you guys are willing to put in the effort. Remember that. So don't listen to the naysayers. They're all out there. They're not going to succeed. You guys are going to succeed. Best example of this, Drew Francis and Derek Harris. They're at, I think, 12 ATM locations, and they've been finding them on their own, too. They've been phenomenal. We helped them in the beginning. Started, We provided them in multiple locations, but they wanted to expand. They wanted to put in a little sweat equity. This is the best example. Phenomenal kids. They're actually from... I'd say the Midwest, right? I consider it the Midwest. But with that being said, they actually met each other in college. They are playing football together. They decided to partner up, business partners. Now, with that, they actually found a strip club in Las Vegas, Nevada, guys. Take a second and think about that, guys. They found a strip club. I was just like, when they told me, I was like, get the I was like, no way. You found a strip club. And they're like, yeah, we were just putting in a little effort. We saw it on Facebook. And now they're going to place four ATMs at a cash strip club. And they're going to be charging 
I don't want to get into what they're charging, but let's put it this way. They're going to be making multiple thousand dollars a month on their cash ATMs. Think about that. And it's 2023. What do people say? <clears throat> they say it's saturated. I'm like you're out of your mind, guys. There are premium locations out there if you're willing to put in the work also. So when it comes down to it, guys, sweat equity is the definition of a cash ATM business. Because at the end of the day, if you're not willing to put in effort into your business, you're going to fail, guys. Now, with that being said, that's the cash ATM. That was my foundation. That was multiple members of our team's foundation that catapulted us into business. Okay. But if you're looking for a passive investment, and I'm talking about like, literally, like I'm talking almost every single thing done for you, the BTM business. And here's the reason why, guys. And I'll actually get into this on our third lesson that's going to come up. But with the Bitcoin ATM business, it's a little easier as long as you outsource things, right? And I don't want to give away too many of the secrets. But with the Bitcoin ATM business, you're more focusing on less transactions, but higher transaction sizes. So with cash ATMs, you're focusing on smaller transactions. I'm talking like it's typically about $40 to $100 is about the amount you pull out of ATM. It's the convenience factor. With Bitcoin ATMs, you're typically looking at about $1,000 transactions or more. And you charge them a percentage. Based on our training and experience, we typically see between 10 to 20% is about the average to charge people to use a machine. So now think about that. Basic math. Somebody goes to your actual machine. They put in $1,000 in cash. They get charged, we'll say 15%. You're going to be making $150 off of that one transaction. You get 10 of those a month. That's $1,500. That's just 10 transactions, guys. But that's not including the large transactions that happen. The ones for three, four, five, even $10,000. Think about that for a second. Say you're charging 15% and somebody goes to your machine and they get $10,000. You have just made $1,500 on one transaction. So with that being said, when it comes to the Bitcoin ATM business, that is more for people that want a passive investment. And here's the reason why. Let me tell you guys a little story. So get them a few years ago was working a lot, just like I know a lot of you are. You guys are busy and I understand that. So most of us, and I say most of us, most of the U.S. are working our asses off to get and just survive. That's how I was. That's how I was before. I was actually working 16 hours a day. Let me tell you my schedule, guys. I was working. So I'd wake up. My schedule was I'd wake up at 4.45 a.m. I'd make it into work by 5 a.m. Because at the end of the day, I decided to pay a little more to live closer to work. Because I just did not want to travel. I wanted to maximize my day. So 4.45 a.m. And then I would actually drive straight to work. Wouldn't eat anything. And i work out at work. 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. I would actually have my meal in the locker room, because I was actually a police officer, on a little hot pot, warming it up. I'd quickly scarf down my meal, start my first shift. And I say my first shift because I said 16 hours, because I was working my ass off. I had to get ahead, just like how you guys want to get ahead. Okay. So 16 hours. So my first shift was typically about 10 hours. Then I would have a break, take a shower, put on a new set of clothes and start my second shift. Then I'd go straight home, Go to sleep and do the same thing over and over again. I was doing that six days a week for four months straight, guys, because I knew I had to get ahead. At the end of the day, the Bitcoin ATM business are for those that want to get ahead. It's going to be a little more cost to entry. You're typically looking at low five figures. And the reason why is because you got to count for the machine, which brings me to my next point. You want a two-way Bitcoin ATM. And the reason why, and let me explain to you guys what two-way even means. Two-way means somebody can go to your machine and buy Bitcoin and also sell Bitcoin. And the reason why is because you got to think to yourself, if you can only buy something at a machine, you kind of have like limited utility, right? And we're emerging in a new industry, guys, because if somebody owns crypto, where can they actually get cash from? Let me give you an example. I am in Europe right now. I actually have, I mean, I have my ledger with me somewhere over here, but it's on my phone. So what I could do is I can go to one of these because they actually have Bitcoin ATMs here. I can go to a Bitcoin ATM, scan my QR code on my phone and pull out euros. Think about that. Here's the reason why I bring this up. My debit card expired just before my trip. Okay. Okay. So now I contact my bank and I'm like, hey, can I get a new debit card? They're like, yeah, we'll ship it out to you in three business days. I'm like three business days, I'm literally going to be in Europe in, in a day. They're like, well, what do you want us to do? I'm like, well, 
I don't know. So now I'm thinking to myself, like, well, how am I going to get cash? I don't want to use my credit card here. I, get, I keep being charged 3%, this foreign transaction fee. So I'm like, what do I do? Then I remembered I actually have my Bitcoin wallet on my phone. So what do I do? I go to a Bitcoin ATM and pull out euros. People were perplexed because even the people here, they're like, what? what's going on over here? So you want to have a sell machine also because, yeah, they charge me a convenience fee at the end of the day. But when it comes down to it, I was able to get local currency. I didn't even need to exchange it for my Bitcoin wallet. And I just came from the U.S. Nobody needed no ID. I just literally scanned my phone. So when it comes down to it, you want to have a buy and sell machine. You want to take advantage of the people traveling to the U.S. And you also want to take advantage of the people that invested in crypto early. Because think about it. If I, if, you, if I came to your machine and I invested since 2016 and I bought Bitcoin at $600, do you really think I'm going to care if you're charging me an extra 2 or 3% when Bitcoin is like $23,000 right now? I could care less. I just want access to my cash, which I'm in a dire situation. I need cash because the country I'm in is a very cash heavy country. Like it's, it's like literally impossible to find somebody swiping a credit card here. So I was in a dire need. So I was willing to pay that convenience fee. So that's the big thing with the Bitcoin ATM business guys that people don't realize. Cause another question we always get is what, again, I'm like, why don't they just use an exchange? Well, first of all, you have that situation, but you also have an entire population of people that what, don't have access to cash. And when I say that, and I, I misspoke, don't have access to banks. And here's the thing, when it comes down to the Bitcoin ATM business and banking in general in the United States, guys, we say about 20 to 25% people do not have access to the banking system or they just don't want to use the banking system, whether it's distrust, because as you guys know, there is B of A, your people's money literally just disappeared, just you woke up one day, you check your checking account, and it's gone, right? So there's a distrust of the banking system. But also, some people just don't have access to banking. So they're willing to pay that convenience fee to use your machine, guys, because you're providing a service. And the best example I give of this, guys, it's, it's actually very simple. How many of you guys know McDonald's is franchise-owned? Meaning that the McDonald's next to you is not owned by the original McDonald's. It's an individual person that owns that. Do you really think that person eats at McDonald's every day? Why do you think I bring this up? Because you have to get this out of your head, guys. Just because maybe you wouldn't have done something doesn't mean somebody else isn't. Check cashing, for example. You guys have seen check cashing places. Why is it if you don't use check cashing, those places are everywhere? Cash-only laundromats. I rarely use cash-only laundromats, but at the end of the day, there is a use for them. There's a society, a portion of society that is willing to use that business model, guys. So remember, when it comes down to it, you don't necessarily have to do something yourself before you invest in something. That's why I have doubled down and invest in Bitcoin ATMs, guys. So if you're looking for more of a passive investment, meaning that you want things done for you, you're going to be leaning more towards Bitcoin ATMs, guys, right? And at the end of the day, there's more profit potential because think about it. On a cash ATM, you're looking at convenience. Typically, you're looking at a little over 200 to maybe seven, $800 a month for your location, okay? Which is good. You're building a portfolio, lower cost entry. With Bitcoin ATMs, based on our experience, you're looking at $1,000 or more per month, per machine. We have seen, I mean, I know of a location in the East Coast that's generating $100,000 a month. Absolutely ridiculous, guys. And I'm going to show you some examples of some of our locations in January in our third lesson, guys. But when it comes down to it, there's two options, guys. If you're looking for passive, you're going to go with Bitcoin ATMs. If you're looking for more semi-passive where you're willing to put a little more of the effort, you're going to go to Cash ATM, guys. But with that being said, I need to get to the next lesson, guys, because we are running out of time, guys, right? So if you're excited, guys, you're excited. I'm actually going to break down exactly the mentality that I had to learn. And I lost, I'm telling you, hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's the same story. Say Even Paul, same thing. He mentions how he had to invest in a lot of things to learn these things. If you're excited to learn the bulletproof mindset to becoming a millionaire, comment bulletproof below, guys. Comment bulletproof. I want to know. I, I, this engagement's got to go up, guys. I'm literally going to drop some gems on you right now. I'm literally going to break down exactly what you guys need to know right now. All right. Let's see what we got. And I'll see if I have my. Uh, there it is. That's that's the closest I have to a bullet sound, guys. All right. <laughs> so let's see if we got some comments here.
bulletproof. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. So, and I, I see a, a pretty good comment over here. Convenience for BTC quickly and no bank involved. I like that. See, this is the same mentality that actually helped me scale. You have to be able to consolidate information, guys, right? So with that being said, guys, let me ask you guys a question, right? So this is something that really stood out to me when it comes down to business, because I listen to a lot of business podcasts, guys, right? So what season are you in? And I'm not talking about like the seasons of the year. I'm talking about like what season are you in of your lifestyle? Because at the end of the day, you got to ask yourself, are you looking for more of a long-term or short-term portion of your life? And what do I mean by that? Well, there's two stages in life. And when it comes down to generating revenue, and I say generating revenue, what I mean by that is making money, right? I say revenue because I want you to start thinking like a business person. Because when it comes down to it, use the terminology of the industry you're going to be in. So you have to ask yourself, are you at the building stage, which is usually the beginning portion of your life, where you're building the skills, you're building the network, you're building the foundation for your business, or are you actually at the long-term earning side, right? Because when it comes down to it, guys, there's two sides to business, right? And it comes down to a mentality. Some people have a short-term mentality. How many of you guys have those friends that are like, man, I just want to make some money quick. And, you're, and they never survive. Maybe they make, we'll say, $5,000 and they spend it all. And they make another $1,000. And you're just like, dude, if you had just invested that and you focused on a long-term horizon, you would be a millionaire now. And they just keep spending it. That's the short-term mentality. What you need to have, and the hardest thing that I learned, guys, and I'm talking like I'm hard-headed. I am absolutely hard-headed. I'm, I'm the first one to admit it. But when it comes down to it, you have to have a long-term mentality, guys. After speaking to multimillionaires, speaking to billionaires, being in the presence and me being the lowest one in the totem pole around all these people, the number one thing, guys, that they would say is sometimes you need to take a temporary pay cut to earn more long-term, which goes into my first lesson, guys. Success is not overnight. I hear this all the time, guys. They're like, it's, it hasn't come yet. Why isn't it my turn? It's not fast enough. That's the same mentality kids have on Christmas Eve, guys. When you're just like, hey, just go to sleep. You're going to open your present tomorrow. You don't want to have that mentality, guys. Success is not overnight. I worked my ass off for seven years straight. And I'm talking, like, you guys don't understand. I'm talking, I was working at least 80 hours a week minimum. I was working the equivalent of two jobs just to get where I am today. And I still, I mean, it's 2 a.m., guys. Let's keep it real. I don't need to be here. I got to just have postponed. But I work every single day to make sure you guys survive and thrive also, which goes into mindset. So when it comes down to it, guys, you are being lied to. What do I mean by that? You're being lied to, guys. I used to believe all those online gurus, and you guys have seen them online, the online gurus that are like, hey, you know, I'm going to get rich quick. This is exactly how you're going to be a millionaire in one year. And what happens? You get scammed. There's no difference between that and a guy saying, hey, you're, you're a prince in this country. Send me $1,000 in a wire transfer. It's the same thing, guys. It's a scheme. You got to avoid those. It's all about mindset when it comes down to making money. And the reason why I was able to generate seven figures was straight up, it was mindset. I had to change my mindset. I had to get let go of my ego because when it comes down to it, guys, it's your ego. And I'm not saying like you're cocky or things like that. It's your ego. So when someone says, hey, close your eyes and think about this for a second, when you don't close your eyes, guess what? It's your ego. You're like, hey, I'm too good for this. I'm telling you right now, I used to fall for all this stuff, guys. I invested in penny stocks, guys. Penny stock courses. I was like, I'm going to get rich off penny stocks. I know I sound dumb. But at the end of the day, I'm brave enough to admit it. I signed up for those courses. Obviously, it didn't work out. I also invested in Forex. I'm like, man, this Forex thing, I saw it online. These guys are saying they're going to make me some money. Eh, that didn't work out. Invested in a lot of eBooks on some random business ideas that I didn't execute on because it was just, at the end of the day, it was just stimulation for my brain. Nothing happened. And then I also invested in Amazon drop shipping. That did not work out. It was already saturated, guys. That market... And that was a year ago. All these gurus are selling the courses. I signed up like an idiot. Guess what? Didn't work out. 
Then I tried day trading, guys. That was probably like one of my worst decisions. All the money I earned, and this was painful, guys. This was absolutely painful for me. But day trading, it didn't work out. And it wasn't down to like, you know, metrics or capturing an RSI or anything like that. It was just, it wasn't, it didn't make sense. Here's the thing, guys. The wealthiest people in the world, do you know how they built that wealth? It wasn't day trading. It wasn't stocks. It wasn't any of that stuff, guys. It's business. It's not even real estate. It's business, guys. It comes down to it. They owned businesses to build their wealth, guys. Don't get it mistaken. Everyone is trying to get you on this get-rich-quick scheme. What we say, build a business. I don't care if it's a Bitcoin ATM business, a cash ATM business, a vending machine. I don't care what it is, guys. But you have to build a business. You have to get that in your head. Because when it comes down to it, it comes down to equity. What do I mean by that? Well, what that means is you need to own something. Wouldn't you rather, and here's the thing, guys, it, it really pisses me off when I hear this, guys. Everyone's always talking about real estate. And don't get me wrong, I've invested in real estate. But everyone says, oh, that's how you're going to get rich. That's how you get rich. No, it's not, guys. It is absolutely not. I'm telling you right now, real estate's not the way you're going to get rich. And it's going to offend some people. That's how you preserve your wealth. That's not how you build your wealth. The way you build your wealth is by business. Wouldn't you rather be making a hundred thousand dollars a month in a business and be able to buy your house for cash or are you going to focus on this method of taking out loans dealing with closing costs dealing with realtor real estate fees all that stuff wouldn't you rather just buy it with cash then you wouldn't need to worry about interest rates and then if you want you say hey i'm just going to refinance it for an extremely low rate because you bought it with cash so when it comes down to it guys it comes down to getting a cash flowing business. You have to build a cash flowing business, guys. That's the way to build your wealth. Because at the end of the day, when you talk to anybody that usually is wealthy, and I'm not talking about they got rich quick on maybe some crypto or some, some freaking stock that pumped off. It's always by businesses. It's always businesses, guys. I was in business class. I was on a flight recently, actually, and I was talking to this guy. And I keep hearing the same recurring story because there's two flights. You know, we had a layover on the first flight. The person I'm sitting next to, I said, hey, what do you do? What does he say? He's like, I actually own a security business. I'm like security business. What do you mean? He's like, I literally just sell alarms and security cameras and I install it for people. I was like, if you don't mind me asking, how much like are you generating? He's like, oh, I'm, I'm probably making like four hundred thousand dollars a month. Like four hundred thousand dollars a month. He's like, yeah, real simple. I was like, well, how'd you get started? He's like, I started installing security cameras, then I installed some actual alarm system, Bay Alarm, and then I started to actually decide, you know what? I don't want to work for somebody. I want to actually turn this into a business. So we started hiring people to work for him to install it for him, and he got connected with the manufacturer. Guess what? Four hundred thousand dollars a month, and we're sitting next to each other. I'm like, okay. Lesson number one: build a business. Next flight. Next day, I'm sitting next to. You. I had to ask him. I was like, hey, what's going on? Because he's on the phone. He was actually on his computer. He bought the Wi-Fi. And I, I looked over and, you know, he was, he was checking, like, some transactions. I was like, hey, if you don't mind me asking, like, wh wh where are you headed to? He was like, oh, I'm, I'm actually heading to a uh, one of my locations. I'm like, your locations? What are you talking about? And I'm thinking he's going to say cash ATMs, right? I got excited. I was like, we're going to talk about cash ATMs. And he says, well, I'm actually going to one of my laundromats I invested in. I'm like, a laundromat? He's like, and one of them, what does that mean? He's like, well, I own multiple laundromats. And I thought to myself, I was like, man. Laundry mats, that's a phenomenal idea. It's like, it's like, well, what are you generating? He's like, man, I was like, these things are cash flowing like crazy. Here's the thing, guys. I'm not saying to invest in a security business. I'm not invest saying to invest in a laundry mat business. What I'm saying is don't miss the forest for the trees. Focus on a business. That is the first thing you need to focus on, building a business and scaling it, guys. The second thing, and this is probably one of the most painful, and I'm talking about guys like, this still hurt, hits me because this happened recently also. You're going to lose friends along the way. On your path to millions of dollars, you will lose friends along the way. There's no way around it, guys. There's absolutely no way around it. Because when it comes down to it, people aren't going to see your vision. They aren't going to see what you see, guys. I'm going to tell you a little story, guys. So young get em. Finally generated. He, I mean, he had $100,000 in his bank account. I thought I was on top of the world, guys, $100,000. In California, unfortunately, that's not a lot of money. 
it took me months and months and months and months and months and months to generate that guys. And I'm talking about overtime all the time, 16 hours a day. I was working, I was sweating. My friend approached me and long and story short, I actually invested in the business, invested $50,000, a little over 50, but I say 50, $50,000 in this business is an actual retail storefront. Okay. I thought I had it all figured out. Well, here's the problem. I mixed the friendship of somebody who was just really like somebody I laughed with. That's it. That's it. They had no, they had no complimenting skills, nothing like that. It was just a friendship. And I, eh, whatever, I trust them. No contract, nothing. Started the business with them. Guess what? It failed. Here's the reason why. Got caught up in the glamorous thing. Started buying very expensive things that I wasn't aware of. I go to the store, all this fancy stuff, guys. And there's no merchandise. And I'm thinking to myself, like, where'd you get the little water maker? Where'd you get the, the nice fridge with all the fancy San Pellegrinos and all that? I was like, oh, I spent it. I was like, well, where'd you get the money? He's like, oh, it's yours. That wasn't what it was for. Well, let bygones be bygones. Let's just say we're just not really friends anymore, right? You're going to lose people along the way. Second example, guys, because that's investing. Well, recently I got a text message. I actually had to change my phone number, guys, because people are going to start seeing you grow. They're going to see you start to change. They're going to say, hey, Jessica, hey, get them. You're doing better. But they're going to have the concept of you, the old you. And what I mean by that is they're only going to be thinking of the old one they remember, the person that wasn't thinking about business, the person that wasn't making those sacrifices to survive and thrive. And I bring up survive for a reason. Because I actually accidentally sent them a message. And the, 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 the thing I should have probably realized was I didn't have their number saved. So their number wasn't saved for a reason. You guys know what I'm talking about. Some people, you don't have their number saved because you deleted their contact. So I actually sent them. I, they were the wrong person, right? I actually Venmoed them on accident. And they sent me a message like, hey, did you mean to Venmo me this money? I was like, no, I actually meant to send it to somebody else. They sent it back. And of course, you know, out of courtesy, I said, hey, how are you doing? They said, well, you know, they're like, I'm surviving. It's like surviving. They, they're in a high paying profession. Let's just say they're making six figures. I didn't respond. Because at the end of the day, I don't want that toxic mentality around me, guys. I'm traveling. I'm hanging around business people. I'm hanging around people that want to serve, that actually want to get better, that want to elevate their lives. And this person is showing me their mindset. They said, I'm surviving. Surviving what? I already know they have, they have a, a very posh, very comfortable lifestyle making six figures, but they're surviving. The first thing they want to do is complain. Hey, ax them. And it's nothing personal guys. Some people think it's offensive. It's not for you to get to the next level. You're going to lose people along the way. It's inevitable. It's evolution guys. It's business evolution. You're getting to the next level. You're changing your zip code. You're changing the car you drive, the way you drive, the stuff you wear, the same people you used to hang out with in elementary school, I guarantee you don't hang out with them. The same people you hung out with in high school, you don't hang out with them. So what's different about now? You're going to be years down the road and you're not going to be with the same people, guys. And this goes into the third lesson, guys. Family does not have to be blood. I want you to think about that for a second, guys. How many of you guys have friends that you consider family? Comment family below. I'm talking about, you don't talk about that, ride or die. I'm not talking about dogs, guys, or cats, right? I'm talking about family. Like you're talking about friends that you believe are family. Comment family below because I know you guys are out there because I got that. A lot of my friends, I actually consider family. That's how close we are. We're like this, Rochambeau. That's how it goes, right? If you, I mean, I might be dating myself, but hopefully you guys know the reference, right? Well, your family is not always going to be your family, guys. How many of you guys have heard the story, right? Family member lets somebody borrow money. They hold them back. There's, people are people when it comes down to it. They have their own personalities. People are going to be people. And what I mean by that is they're going to be how they are. They can't help it. So sometimes your family is actually the ones that are holding you back. And it sucks. I'm not going to lie. It sucks, guys. When your family are the ones that hold you back, it sucks. So you have to remember, 
When you're losing people along the way, it might be family. And I'm not saying just cut everybody off. Don't, don't misquote what I'm saying. What I'm saying is sometimes along the way, those people that you thought were close to you actually aren't that close to you. They don't want to really see you actually thrive. What they want is they want you to be there. They want just to feel good around you, but you're not going to have enough time. To this day, I run my day by Google Calendar. I have a structured setup. I carry a little mini notepad with me, a little post-it notepad, and I carry a full notepad with me to cover my day because I'm so busy. And don't get me wrong. I spend time with family. I spend time with friends. But when it comes down to it, I'm doing what I got to do to survive and thrive. Are you doing what you got to do? You might have to cut them off, guys. It's a harsh reality when it comes to business. And if you're really serious about getting into the multimillionaire realm, more than likely, you're not going to have the same people around, guys. And if you do, hats off to you. I respect you. Somehow, some way you did it. But realistically, 99% of the people that actually start elevating, they have to cut and leave behind some people. And that's just how it is, guys. All right. So with that being said, guys, those are the three ways to make sure you have a bulletproof mindset to make sure you are a multimillionaire. Because I truly believe, I'm telling you guys, I truly believe that the fact you guys are here means you guys are willing to make it. I'm telling you that it's 2.48 a.m., guys. And that's why I'm here speaking to you right now, because I know I have to do my duty to make sure you guys get to the promised land. That's just how it is. Right. So with that being said, guys, you're excited because this lesson, <laughs> I got to make it quick, man, because I'm I, I need to go to sleep, guys. I'm on my, my seventh macchiato, right? So if you're excited on how to create a $10,000 a month BTM business, guys, and I'm talking about Bitcoin ATM business. And if you've been paying attention to crypto prices, they're going up. And the first time I talked about this, you guys can quote me. It's in the guide section. It was $16,000 of Bitcoin. And I was telling you guys, right? And I'm not hearing saying I'm telling you so, but I was telling you, you might want to invest in some Bitcoin ATMs before we start pumping the rest of the year, guys. So if you're excited to generate $10,000 a month from your BTM business, comment BTM below, guys. Comment BTM. I want to know who's serious. Who wants to know how to start generating some real money? Because $10,000 is that's pretty serious money when it comes down to another business, guys. Most businesses don't make over $5,000. So comment BTM below, guys, because we have some phenomenal resources here. And this is about to be a good lesson, guys. All right. So let's do this. Give me a second. I'm going to queue up my presentation. Let's do this. I need to actually get my Pellegrino to get ready for this. All right. All right. All right. Let's see this. Boom. Here we go. All right. So, guys, let me, you know, let me let me take a step back. You know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do, guys? This is what I'm going to do about this for a second. I just want you to listen. That's me smiling right now. Right. So how many of you guys are serious? And I'm talking about like, just 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 take a step. Just listen to me for a second. You don't even need to watch this. That's why I turn off the camera, because I want you to stop looking for a second and just think to yourself. How many of you guys are serious about succeeding? I don't care where you're at. I truly don't care where you're at right now. I mean, if you're driving, please don't, don't close your eyes. But close your eyes for a second and think. Ask yourself, why are you here? Why are you watching this live? And if you just want to hear me talk, that's cool. I appreciate it. But you have to ask yourself, why are you watching this live? There's a reason why. I don't need to know what it is. I don't need to know. But there's a reason why you're here thinking about starting a business or expanding your business. There's a reason why you're looking at different investment vehicles. It may not be ATMs, guys. I'm transparent. It's all right. But there's a reason why. And you have to remember that, guys. And here's the reason why. Motivation will get you started but it's going to fade. You're going to be tired. You're going to be angry sometimes. You're going to hate life sometimes. You're going to wake up on the wrong side of bed and you're just like, man, I don't want to do this shit. But guess what? Those are the days that test you. The motivation won't get you past those days. I'm telling you right now, they won't. Don't listen to anybody else. They will not get you past there. The discipline is what's going to make you a millionaire, guys. The discipline to continue to do what you have to do is going to make you a millionaire. So no, if you know for sure, 
absolutely certain that 2023 is going to be your year. And I'm talking about your year to thrive. Comment, it's mine below. Comment, it's mine. Don't let society shame you. You got to take what's yours. There's a reason why you guys are here tonight. There's a reason why, guys. And you can open your eyes now because I'm here. Comment, it's mine below. Because society's going to try to shame you into saying, you know what? You shouldn't do that. It's not fair. It's not nice. It doesn't matter, guys, because what you need to do is take what's yours. Generate that revenue that's going to get you to where you want to be. The reason why you're here. And then you can look back and bring and help those people out that fell behind. Until you finish the race, you can't go back and help somebody else out. You can't help yourself. If you can't help yourself, how are you supposed to help other people, guys? So with that being said, this is the reason tonight you're going to take action. I don't care what it is but you will take action on what you think you're going to do, all right? So let me break down exactly how you guys are going to generate $10,000 or more from your Bitcoin ATM business, guys, all right? So what I'm going to do is put myself to the side over here so you can see this. Now, like I said, atmtogether.com, we have generated a lot of money when it comes down to cash ATMs and Bitcoin ATMs, guys. And you see here, there's this pretty topper right over here. So generating $10,000 a month from the Bitcoin ATM business, Step number one, because I like to do step-by-step -step progress to make sure you guys are successful, guys. So step number one is going to be to capture momentum, okay? When it comes down to business, you have to capture momentum. And what do I mean by that, guys? Think about what happened in 2022, guys. How many of you guys are aware of what happened with crypto in 2022? Anybody? Anybody remember? In the beginning of 2022, guys, a lot of things happened. All right. Look at all these logos here. Just just take a second to look at all this. So if you guys remember, there was a company called 3AC, Three Arrows Capital, and I was deeply involved in the news with this. They were an investment firm when it comes to crypto. They crashed. They uh, nobody even knows what they did. Those guys, they did some shady stuff, but they didn't it didn't work out. Let's just put it like that. All right. Then. Celsius went down and Genesis went down. And these were had all these people's crypto on them. Paul was a victim of BlockFi. BlockFi went down because FTX, which was one of the biggest crypto exchanges, went down. If you guys remember, those guys bought a stadium. They literally bought a stadium, guys. So FTX went down. They were the ones that were bankrolling all these other exchanges. So guess what, guys? People lost trust in crypto. When grandma lost money, when your uncle lost money, when your dog lost money. <laughs> Come on, guys. How are you supposed to trust crypto? But here's the thing. There was another industry making money. And those were actually Bitcoin ATMs. And I want to zoom out so you guys can actually see this. So if you see right over here. Bitcoin Depot, which is one of the largest privately owned Bitcoin ATM companies. They actually made 25% more money in the first nine months of 2022, guys. I had to zoom in for that. What does that mean? When all this stuff was happening, when there was blood in the streets of 2022, the crypto blood was in the streets. They were making more money. Why do you think that is? People were rushing to sell their crypto and buy crypto. Why? There's two investment strategies. And I'm going to tell you a secret of that, why they don't matter. There are the people that wanted to buy because crypto was down. And there are the people that wanted to sell when crypto was up and down. It doesn't matter. So check this out. You were making money off the movements. Remember when I mentioned real estate? How real estate's not going to get you rich. The people that get rich off real estate are the ones that treat it like a business. They make money on the movement of real estate. So when the property sells, guess what? That realtor makes, we'll say 5% commission. When the property buys, that realtor makes commission. The mortgage broker makes money. The title insurance company, the title company, the escrow agent, all these people are making money off the movement of the property, guys. It's the same thing with crypto. You don't need to invest in crypto. I'm telling you right now, I dude, I made freaking seven. I made 
millions in crypto, guys. And I'm telling you, you don't need to invest in crypto. That should tell you something. If anything, I should be the guy saying, buy, 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 which I do believe you should invest, but you don't have to because the real money is made in the movement. The crypto exchanges charge it a percentage for you to buy and sell. That's where they make all their money. It's not off holding crypto. It's the same thing with Bitcoin ATMs, guys. So the first thing you want to do is capture momentum because when it comes down to it, there's momentum in this industry right now. And the reason why is there's a distrust in exchanges. There's probably going to be regulation when it comes to exchanges. So what are people going to want to do? They're going to want to go to Bitcoin ATMs. And when crypto prices start to increase later this year, guess what happens? People flock to buy it because people are irrational. The reason why you guys are here is because you are rational. You guys are the business men and business women. You know there's an emerging industry and you need to take advantage of it. Maybe you just don't know how. That's okay. That's why we're here. So with the first thing you want to do with the Bitcoin ATM business is capture momentum, guys. Don't stand on the sidelines as you see people start to flock and go to these machines. Don't stand on the sideline, guys, in any industry. The worst thing you could do is stand on the sidelines. Remember that. Don't be the person on the bench when the Warriors are going to the finals. Don't be the person on the bench when that team is going to the Super Bowl. You're going to waste your time. So you want to capture momentum, guys. After that, you have to identify premium locations, guys.